Zach, you there? Are we going to test I, this out? Oh, you're looking I good. I think so. I'm, uh, you guys can see me here okay? Oh, yeah. Yep. We see we see you good. We hear you crystal clear. Look at Coomzy <laughs> all dressed up. I know. Coomzy's looking sharp. I'm looking sharp. We're here at Roger's Place. Uh, just finished up with uh, some press conferences and stuff like that. So, so a couple of interesting uh, storylines here today. I love it. I love it. Yeah, um, Coomzy's holding the camera. Nope. Just hold it sideways. <laughs> Other way around now. What is going Perfect. on? <laughs> you guys, you guys <laughs> hold on. Me. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. How's that? Are we good? Yes. Now? Yes, okay. we are good. We are good to go. All right. What is your best read on what the Oilers forward lineup will look at like next game? Do you make a lot out of the whole Evander Kane chat with Chris Knobloch and not skating? If you had to guess, is he more likely to go or not? My guess, Tyler, is that he's likely not going to be in the lineup. Now, initially, Chris Knobloch kind of was playing a little bit coy with it. He did say that they haven't made a final decision, but you know what? Uh, it did appear that Ryan McLeod was going to be skating in the top six alongside Leon Dreisaitl and Dylan Holloway. So if you kind of read from that, you know, the read kind of is that Kane might be out of the lineup for game three. Uh, you guys, last time when I was texting with you, you said you were waiting for Connor McDavid to go to the podium. Anything significant stand out in McDavid talking to the media? Nothing significant. Nothing significant from McDavid. No, you know, just talked about, you know, the team is still optimistic. They're still feeling good. They're feeling light right now. And I think you can kind of get that feeling in the dressing room too. There was an open availability there. I spoke with a couple of guys, Adam Henry, Corey Perry, and they did seem kind of light. You know, they're all kind of relishing in this moment of just getting to be in the Stanley Cup finals right now. So, you know, there's there's a lot of positivity around this team right now. Uh, on the blue line, Darnell Nurse didn't skate, but Chris Knobloch says he's good to go, right? Yeah, it sounds like Darnell Nurse will be good to go. Ben Gleason skated on the second pairing with uh, Dayarne today. Uh, but that was just as a placeholder. It does appear that Cody Cece is going to be out of the lineup again. He was skating on like the fourth pairing alongside Phil Kemp. So that uh, it appears that the uh, D or the blue line rather is going to stay the same as uh, game three. There's a bunch of different kind of takes going around about what the Oilers need to do better or different in game three compared to games one and two. I've talked about and Gregor wrote about how I think the stars got to start bringing it and really push some offense. One goal in two games is unacceptable. Frank thinks they need more from the depth. Where do you come out on that? What are some things you think the Oilers need to do better tomorrow in game three of this series? Well, I think there's a lot of things they need to do better, Tyler, and namely is score some goals. I mean, anybody, right? One goal for two games is not going to win you many hockey games at any point in time, let alone in the Stanley Cup Finals. So I think for the Oilers, it's going to be bearing down on those chances offensively, finding a way to put the puck in the net. The power play especially, I think they didn't look very good in game two. Looked solid in game one, but this is a power play that is going up against a really solid penalty kill. We saw how aggressive the Panthers were in game two, and it did kind of seem like it threw the Oilers guys off of their game a little bit. But again, in the, in the uh, open dressing room, Zach Hyman was talking about them still feeling confident in that group. And Connor McDavid used a quote that we kind of like to play road hockey out there on the power play. So they kind of got to get back to their roots and, and doing what they know how to do. Yeah. Was there any uh, any conversation about the physicality in game two by any of the players today? Yeah, a little bit. Corey Perry talked it about a little bit, but nothing major. Um, just kind of a part of the game is kind of what he was saying. So I will say, though, I did find it interesting how physical that second game was versus that first game. I'm really curious to see how much of that carries over into game three. I think here for the Oilers playing at home in Rogers Place, they're going to want to try and come out and set the tempo and set the energy and the pace for that game. So I think the start of the game is going to be really telling about how the rest of it will go. Uh, personally now, you and Coombsy getting a chance to be credentialized media for the Stanley Cup final in Edmonton. Uh, what's day one been like? How much fun are you guys having? Uh, it's been a blast so far. We got down here, got our uh, media gear set up, ran into Avery, ran into a couple of the other guys too. Uh, sat right up over there watching the skate and stuff like that. So it was very cool. A uh, very cool opportunity for us to be here. And we're really excited about the coverage we're going to be able to bring in these couple of games. Uh, Coombsy is going to have a scenes from the morning skate article. I'm going to have something coming out here right away. Just taking a look at the lines with some quotes that I've got a feature coming this afternoon about guys like Adam Henrique and Corey Perry really relishing in the moment of getting to be in the Stanley Cup finals again. Pretty cool stuff. And you and Coombsy are going to be in the building in press row for us tomorrow night for game three. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be checking in with you guys throughout the home side of the series. Thanks for your time and good camera work, Coombsy. What we saw of you, you both look very sharp. <laughs> Thanks. I, he can't hear you, but I'll, uh, I'll be sure to let him know. Yeah. All right. There you go. Doing good on the camera.
Oh, he, turned, oh, he blew us a kiss. We didn't see it. All right. Uh, shout out to Zach and Cam for swinging by on the show. I love that we got those two in the mix down at the arena, and I know they're going to do great stuff. Make sure you go to OilersNation.com to read all their coverage. That was special. I got. I think next time we get to go on a road trip, I'll need a cameraman. I know who I'm calling. Coomzy. Coomzy's the man for the job. Our boy, Hot Honey. Um, They're great. Uh, They're going to do really, really good stuff. And you know what? In classic Nation way, you get these guys live at the rink. They're dressed up nicely, looking good. And we can't figure out how to get the iPhone to tilt to shoot it, which is fantastic stuff, really. What's up, Nation citizens? If you like that video, then you need to be subscribed to the Oilers Nation YouTube podcast, live shows, exclusive interviews and analysis, everything you need from your favorite voices at Oilers Nation. And you don't want to miss any of it. So hammer that subscribe button.